We had an interesting uh, fault this morning. The driver came in and said, hey, I started up this morning and the check engine light was on. And then I let it warm up and a few minutes later it went off. And so he goes, but the light's still on. So when they say the light's still on, I'm assuming it's a check engine light, but it wasn't. So we're going to go in and take a look and I'm going to explain what happened. And I'm going to show you uh, how we figured out what was wrong. It really was pretty simple, but it's not that simple to find. So let's take a look and see. We had fault code 553. That's an unusual fault code. And that means that the fuel system's pressurization is above normal or there's too much fuel pressure being made for what the ECM is commanding. And then we had a fault on the circuit of the actuator that controls fuel pressure and that was shorted high. So we had to decide if we thought the actuator was bad or what. So let's see what happened. Most of the local drivers know when they pull into our shop, if there was a problem and there's lights on, not to shut the engine off, unless of course the stop engine lights on. So the, uh, this fellow left his engine running and he said the check engine lights on. But if you go back and look at my video about MIL lights, you'll see that the check engine light in fact is not on. The only light that's on is the OBD light in the top right. That's an outline of an engine. And there's a parking brake light on on the left, top left lower section. So you can see the engine was idling about 700 RPM and it was uh, 7, 10 in the morning. So I looked up in there and I saw there was no active fault. So we got insight and hooked it up and here's what we found. So when he got to the shop, the only thing that was lit up on the dash was the OBD light. And remember we talked about that in a previous video and the OBD light monitors anything that affects emissions and it does it for four trips. So each trip is four hours. So it could stay on for possibly up to two eight hour shifts. So uh, our fault for fuel pressure was 553 and it was moderately severe. Now notice it says data valid above normal operating range, moderately severe. Data, it's valid data because it's within, the, the numbers are within the parameters of what the sensor can read. Fault code 272, engine fuel pump pressurizing assembly. That's another way to say fuel actuator or fuel pressure control circuit is above or shorted high, above normal shorted high. That means it's open. So if it's open, the plunger in the fuel actuator slams shut and the pump builds all the fuel pressure it can. Because remember in an earlier video where we said if you unplug the actuator, the pressure will go up to 30 some thousand if the pump and fuel system are in good shape. And it did in this case. So let's look at the timestamps on the far right. Fault code 272, this started the problem. The circuit went open and that 11 hours, 32 minutes and 59 seconds is counting from the time it happened until I first hooked up. So that's, that was the first fault to occur. And as the timestamp gets smaller or less time, we are moving towards when I actually hooked up to it with Insight and made this image. So we see that the fuel pressure happened one second after the pressurizing problem happened. And that makes sense. The circuit went open, the solenoid slammed shut, and the pressure went out the roof. We can also see over on the bottom that the engine was making about 33,000 and it was commanding about seven. And you can also see there was no depth pressure yet. So that tells me he had just started the engine up. Of course, oil and water temperatures are both cold as well. So the driver was reporting accurately uh, what happened as best he knew. So here's what we found wrong. This is a parts explosion. Number 53 is the fuel actuator solenoid that, that logged fault 272. And that plug right there, 
the harness from the engine was not completely plugged into it and the pump had a brand new pump head assembly on it so somewhere uh, at another branch they had replaced had the pump head replaced and when they plugged the harness plug in it didn't lock now the reason it didn't lock is when we pulled it out the the um i don't want to call it an o-ring because it's a square seal that goes around the uh, male part of the plug it was all swollen so when they pushed it together it didn't lock because it couldn't get to the end because of that swollen seal so as he was driving it slowly vibrated and it started to unplug itself and when it got to the place the pins were just touching that's what happened so we just removed the um, male plug out of the a female plug that 50, 53 has a female end on its on its harness we removed the male end out of it put a new square seal on it cleaned it off plugged it in started up faults were inactive cleared the uh, shut it off key on cleared the faults with insight the obd light went off and we sent him on his way thanks for joining me on neural splendor